What up? It's Jimmy from Odds.com. This is a clip from our big Tuesday, February 2nd NCAA basketball show. To check out the entire show, hit the link on the bottom of the screen. It's available exclusively on Odds.com. We move on. Another big game in the Big 12. Number 17th ranked West Virginia Mountaineers popping off at 7 p.m. Eastern. They're 11 and 5, 4 and 3 in the Big 12 at Iowa State Cyclones, 2 and 9, 0 and 6 in the Big 12 at James H. Hilton Coliseum in Ames. Iowa. West Virginia opens up as 11 point favorites. They're now 11 and a half point favorites. This total opened up at 144. There's 145 and a half now, and even a 146. A couple 146s have hit the board. West Virginia coming off a disappointing 85 80 loss at home to Florida on Saturday. They closed as four point favorites. Derek Culver, as Max said, was going to dominate this game. He certainly did in the first half. He finished with a career-high 28 points to go along with 12 boards, but he only scored seven in the second half as Florida keyed on him. Leading scorer, Miles McBride, had an off night. Three of 15 for the field from the field for nine points. He did pick up nine assists and six boards. He averages 15.4 points, 3.8 boards, 4.5 assists on the season. Sean McNeil came off the bench to go five for 11 from three on his way to 21 points. He's averaging 10.5 on the year. McBeal, McNeil, excuse me. I don't have the, McNeil went... 5-11 from three, and the rest of the team went three for 17. West Virginia was just 39.7% from the field. That performance comes on the heels of that 88-87 win on, over Texas Tech where they shot 57.7% from the field, 63.2% from three. But they don't have great numbers on the season, 42.4% from the field, 35.8% from three, and 69.9% from the line. Iowa State has been dealing with a COVID outbreak and is in a very difficult spot. They shut down the program on January 9th after an ugly 91-64 home loss to Texas Tech. They returned on January 25th without key members. Key members still in quarantine. They An 81-60 at home loss to Oklahoma State. That's what they came back to on January 25th. And then things were even worse this past Saturday when they lost 95-56 at Mississippi State. They shot 34% from the field, 16.7% from three. Second leading scorer, 6'6", junior Jevin Johnson. Fourth leading scorer, 6'8", senior Solomon Young. Did not return to action when the team did. They're listed as questionable due to quarantine. And without them, their forward, their front court is extremely weak. Where would they be without Razier Bolden? He's played every game. He leads them with 15.5 points, five boards, 4.3 assists per game. But, man, I don't know, Max, if you know, if you have inside information on whether Javon Johnson or Solomon Young will be returning. But without them, how do we not fade them? Max, take it away, West Virginia, Iowa State. Yeah, Jim, I don't have any inside information. I just cap the game as if they're not going to be playing. Simply, West Virginia has to take advantage of missing Cyclones. They have to take advantage of the fact that Solomon Young is not going to be there to deter drivers and to stop Derek Culver. Yes, Derek Culver got keyed in on, but the fact is the Cyclones aren't going to be able to make those second-half adjustments. This is a team that last time they played, West Virginia didn't take them seriously. I think they're going to take them seriously this time. This is a slaughter waiting to happen, in my opinion. When it comes to Iowa State, you let Rasir Bolton score 25. You cannot do that again. Maybe you let him get 17-18. That's okay, but you still also got to key in on Jalen coleman Lands. You got to key in on Tyler Harris. You got to make sure that you keep George Condit off the glass. But I think that West Virginia is going to be able to do that because they summoned the services from the end of the pine. They went and searched for him. He had a beard. He looked disheveled. They told him, clean yourself up. You're playing tonight. His name is Jordan McCabe. And what he did was he didn't do shit on the box score. But he came in. He played solid defense. He was vocal. He helped work this young backcourt through some of their trials and tribulations in game. And that's exactly what we needed in that spot. Coach Huggins called on his on his dog, I call him, to come in and freaking put some work in. And he did. I think that with Derek Culver, the the mission is simple. You can throw it over the top to him and he will work his way in the paint or get to the free throw line. I've watched a lot of West Virginia games, and I've watched a lot of teams struggle with this simple concept. 
you know, when you throw it over the top, you instantly bring the double team from the weak side and you try and force a turnover and a pass out of the paint. I don't know what's wrong with coachings, with coaching staffs and players with their on-court IQ, but they don't do that. So I think that if West Virginia goes to that strategy early, they're going to be able to build up a lead. I think that they're going to be able to take them more seriously than they did last time. I don't think they're going to blow a lead if they are able to get one. And it's just, you got to be aware that the Cyclones coming off such a bad loss. Maybe you get a more desirable effort from them, but the three point shot is critical for West Virginia hit nine plus go 40% from the freaking from deep. You're going to win this game. You're going to cover for us. You're going to get us through this number volume free throws, make 20, make more of them if you can, but get to the free throw line. That is where you're best served. Not letting miles McBride go three for 15 from the field. Cause he can't make a freaking inside the arc jump shot. And he keeps on missing layups. I think that with, West Virginia, Jim, the offensive rebounding is going to be the difference with a five and a half offensive rebound advantage by my numbers, plus being plus five in turnovers. I think that's going to be the the nail in the coffin. And I think that we're going West Virginia. So get me that 11 and a half. I'll ride that like I'm freaking riding a surfboard in the Pacific Ocean. That's great news. Circa Sports hang in the 11. The rest of the books have moved to 11 and a half, but not Circa. They want you to win minus 11, minus 110 at Circa Sports. I like it, Max. Good-looking card. 